What's up everyone, Alex here. So I fancy myself an explorer of video games because I try at least one genre of games that I haven't played in a long time, or not at all, at least once every few months, time willing, of course. So when P-Cube approached me to check out the Class of Heroes 1 and 2 Complete Edition, well, I was frankly surprised because this is a type of JRPG, or RPG actually, that I haven't really indulged in or play a lot of games in. Like, I can probably count at least one game over the past two years, and generously maybe two games over the past seven years that I've actually played something of this genre. So obviously I was a bit reluctant taking this game. But another part of this is coming from the fact that Class of Heroes is a notorious series. I've heard people talk about this game in such a way that they said, if you're not gonna spend time to respect it and give it the amount of time that it needs, it's gonna beat the crap out of you. And given that the first two Class of Heroes are part of this collection, I've actually learned a lot about this series very quickly within the span of a few weeks, actually. And in this video, I wanna just kind of walk you through my experiences with both games in case you're interested in checking out a first-person dungeon crawler that is both punishing and one that's actually fairly friendly, with the caveat, of course, that these are just remasters and not full remakes. So let's check it out. Class of Heroes 1 and 2 Complete Edition is a remastered collection containing the first two games in this first-person dungeon crawler RPG series, which was originally released in 2008 and 2013 in the West, and is now published by P-Cube, who provided me with a PS5 review code and is sponsoring this video. While the collection contains two games, the stories for both titles aren't at all connected, meaning you can start playing Class of Heroes 2G, for example, without having to worry about missing anything from the first game. That being said, Class of Heroes Anniversary Edition and Class of Heroes 2G couldn't be more different, and your choice of which game to start really depends on how well-versed you are in first-person dungeon crawlers. Having said all of that, you're probably wondering why someone who may only have a passing interest in first-person dungeon crawlers would want to try out this collection of games. I find that the best way to answer this question is through another question. Are you the kind of person who loves learning how complex systems work and interact with one another, and is obsessed with seeing how to perfectly min-max everything to the best of your ability, while aiming to build the best party setup you can ever make? If your answer to this is a resounding yes, then you'll love what Class of Heroes 1 and 2 Complete Edition has in store. Your life at school begins by assembling a party of six students, either by creating new ones or utilizing the pre-made characters available. Once completed, you're then ushered into the library to pick up quests that'll help walk you through some of the basics of the game. Then, soon enough, you'll be dungeon crawling to your heart's content. Or not. You see, depending on which game you choose, you may just be stuck running around near the beginning of the dungeon, in the first game's case, or actually exploring the dungeon, in the second game's case. That's because the first game, Class of Heroes Anniversary Edition, was, and still is, widely considered as one of the most difficult first-person dungeon crawlers out there. I'm not joking. The first several hours I played the game, I was being clobbered by mobs of enemies so much that I had to stick around near the entrance so I could whisk myself away at any sign of danger. It's from that perspective that I'm recommending newcomers start with Class of Heroes 2G. When compared to the first game, Class of Heroes 2G streamlines many of the original's complications and delivers a fairly entertaining, albeit light story, that helps guide you through its main campaign. And I want to be clear that both games have narratives that merely serve as flavor to its gameplay, though 2G definitely steps it up a bit more in that department. In fact, 2G even has Japanese voice acting to accompany much of the dialogue, adding to its overall presentation. Every single piece of 2D art and texture work has been upscaled to better quality, though both games pretty much retain the dungeon aesthetics from their original PSP releases. Short tangent aside, if you're an RPG fan that values story above all else, you won't find a complex multi-layered story in Class of Heroes 2G, 
though what the game does have in terms of narrative gets the job done, keeping you engaged as you play through the campaign. While creating new students is fun, I found myself enjoying the pre-made team that's available, and I was able to venture to far-off places really quickly. There are some more obtuse objectives in the game. This is both the blessing and the curse of first-person dungeon crawlers. Just when you think you've explored everything, it usually means you haven't explored enough. It's in this sense that embarking on a journey to discover and play any of these games means that you really have to invest yourself with every facet of the game. And thankfully, compared to the first game, Class of Heroes 2G makes learning these nuances entertaining and informative. To further compare my experience between both games, I was able to explore far more areas in Class of Heroes 2G in the same amount of time I grinded at the beginning of the first dungeon in Class of Heroes Anniversary Edition. In fact, much of your experience with this first game will be filled with confusion, as it has tons of obtuse mechanics that the game doesn't care to explain with a chance that only veterans of this genre will be able to comprehend its intricacies instantly. And even then, there's even a bigger chance that some might not be able to understand how to accomplish certain tasks or how to prioritize them, making the game an overwhelming experience. This is practically why I'd only recommend starting with Class of Heroes Anniversary Edition if you're well versed in the genre and if you have the patience to parse many of its confusing systems and make sense of it all. Battles in both games require you to select your entire party's actions first, after which, turns will play out based on your character's and enemy's speed rating. You'll have two rows of three characters each, and anyone in the back row will need to be equipped with either a ranged weapon or a magical attack in order to inflict damage. These battles are pretty much your standard fare, with your typical fight slash magic slash item and defend options, coupled with team actions that you can spend provided that you have enough team meter built up to use them. And as I said before, enemies in the first game are nastier, given how that game is tuned, with 2G having a better difficulty ramp. And as I've said multiple times already, due to these releases being remasters and not proper remakes, there will be things that will feel a bit dated. Both games' alchemy systems, for instance, require you to select an item's ingredients rather than selecting what item you'd like to craft. And given how money is hard to come by in both games, utilizing the system becomes extremely crucial as you progress further into the campaign. Fortunately, I found a resource online for Class of Heroes 2 that not only has a game manual from its original release to help further clear up some of its more obtuse concepts, but also all of its alchemical recipes, as well as full maps of all of the labyrinths in the game. I don't normally give out this sort of information in a review, but I feel like for the kind of game that Class of Heroes 2G is, you'll need a lot more supplementary information in order to enjoy your time with it. I've included links to these resources in the description of this video. When I think about my time with Class of Heroes 1 and 2 Complete Edition, I think about the time when I used to play a lot of these sorts of games, the time when Ultima Underworld was out, or even the first-person dungeon crawling of Ultima 4 Quest of the Avatar, which is one of my favorite NES games of all time, by the way. But what Class of Heroes 1 and 2 Complete Edition offers is the best of both worlds. You've got the hardcore in Class of Heroes Anniversary Edition, and you've got the not-so-hardcore, I'm reluctant to call it casual, Class of Heroes 2G, which is more accessible and allows you to actually get through the game a little bit easier. But by no means is it a cakewalk. It's in this sense that I recommend Class of Heroes 1 and 2 Complete Edition to folks who feel like they can really be invested in an engaging gameplay loop that will take them quite a long time to finish. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you get invested into its gameplay systems and what little story that they have, which will take you to the very end. But keep in mind that these games will test you like no other games have. If you somehow manage to get over the learning curve of both of these games, you're going to have a splendid time and probably create some of the best parties you've ever made in any RPG ever. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.